Hello all, welcome to Public Cloud Design Tips and Tricks. Uh, today's topic is AWS API Gateway. What is the problem statement? Uh, the problem statement is how to create, publish, maintain secure APIs for enterprise scale. Now what is Amazon API Gateway it is a managed service from Amazon and acts as a front door for different backend applications. It helps and enables the developers to create, maintain and publish their secure APIs. It enables to create uh, RESTful services and WebSocket APIs. It supports container workloads, serverless workloads, and web application workloads as backend systems. Now, in a typical scenario, how it looks like, uh, there are different channels of the consumers, like user service web applications. They try to uh, access API endpoints, which is hosted in AWS API Gateway, and AWS API Gateway in terms integrate with the backend applications where the service is running. Okay. So that is how it looks like. How a reference architecture within AWS looks like. So it's, uh, the diagram represents AWS data center within a region where Amazon API Gateway is available as a plus pass platform uh, or a managed platform. And that can connect to different uh, type of uh, resources. Uh, for example, uh, it can connect within AWS uh, to VPC as well as non-VPC resources. So when it is a VPC resource, again, it divided into two part, uh, public subnet and private subnet. And now what is a VPC resource? VPC resource confines to an organizational network boundary and that is mean for the organizations. Now, uh, what is a public subnet? Public subnet essentially exposed to public consumers within a VPC boundary and uh, the private subnet exposed to the private consumers within the uh, VPC boundary. So now, uh, here in this example, there is a EC2 instance running along with a load balancer within the public subnet and there is a Lambda applications running in a private subnet. So that those services uh, easily uh, integratable with uh, AWS API gateway and along with that, uh, it can also integrate non-VPC resources like uh, serverless applications or containers. Here it is L Lambda. And it also integrates with different other uh, API um, uh, Amazon services. So uh, that is how it works. And it also can integrate with the non AWS uh, resources uh, using the internet uh, connectivity. So, so in a nutshell, uh, you can also modify the request which is coming to AWS API Gateway uh, based on the backend need. For example, if you want to change the format uh, of the request payload, that can be done uh, in uh, AWS API Gateway. You can also develop your own API using AWS API, Ga API Gateway capability, or you can import uh, any Open API 3.0 compliant uh, contract or uh, you know specification uh, to uh, AWS API Gateway, uh, which is uh, by example uh, developed by tools like Swagger. Okay, so that also um, can be deployed easily within uh, AWS API Gateway. Okay, so now what are the uh, different deployment types uh, possible in uh, AWS API Gateway is uh, uh, First one is edge optimized. So basically, in this kind of a scenario, uh, it, it it basically gets used to reduce latency globally uh, for the consumer, and it always attached to a content delivery network. In this case, it is more uh, agile locations uh, globally, uh, and th th that is actually used. Uh, so when when the when the request comes from a consumer, it's passed uh, goes to the respective actual locations uh, for the content delivery if it is there uh, and it, it gets integrated to uh, API Gateway which is very uh, very nearest to the locations or uh, uh, the backend uh, for the backend application services so that is that is how it works the second one is regional endpoint so it, it, again the the organization or the developers can uh, can you know host their own cdn within the same region uh, with this approach and that also helps in reduce latency within a region uh, for the consumers the third one is more a secured way of working uh, called private endpoint so it is it is it is a requirement when you try to access the apis from a private consumer okay which should not be exposed to public. So in that case, it, it should always run within the 
uh, organizational network boundary and uh, that is where uh, you know private endpoint kind of a deployment comes into uh, picture so th these are uh, uh, the three common use uh, deployment process basically uh, now how a typical api flow looks like so there are three parts of any api flow and the first one is very generic the method request which is more a rest uh, uh, fundamental so the method supports different kind of uh, method like any delete get post put head options and patch next it goes uh, to the integration request uh, it is it is a design time uh, composition basically so whether you need a pass through behavior or a proxy behavior to connect the backend systems for example when it's type lambda then it directly connects to a, a serverless applications which is in the form of lambda uh, or when you you just want to you know pass through the request without doing any changes it's more more a http based type and mock is generally used for you know testing your apis before even hitting to the uh, real backend application so that is how uh, it's used and backend services are more the services which is uh, which is trying to expose their api and point into aws api gateway it can be container application or a normal you know is based approach or a serverless approach it can be anything any service that can be easily integratable with uh, aws api gateway uh, the way uh, a user can customize the request which we already discussed in the previous slides uh, the similar way a user also can customize the response uh, body as well uh, or the response code so basically the aws api gateway enables the user to embed their own http response uh, code uh, or you know uh, customize the payload based on the consumer requirements so that is also possible uh, within the gateway basically uh, now um, uh, what is what is api gateway casing so casing allows uh, the users uh, or the consumers to store uh, frequently read uh, response frequently read data or uh, the response data basically uh, so uh, it also uh, it also results in uh, reduce the number of hits to the real backend systems and that results into a cost minimization uh, and that also eventually helps the uh, or improves the uh, you know lat latency factor so it, it 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 helps in reducing the latency so in a way it helps both reduce the latency and cost okay so how it works so when user uh, when user actually enable the api casing uh, within aws api gateway so on the first request it always goes to the backend system backend system retrieves the data and put it in the case so the next request with the same uh, uh, request parameter when it comes to the um, api gateway then it first goes to the api case to find out uh, that uh, response data if uh, so if, if it is there it always serves from the case uh, store if it not again it goes to the backend system so that is how it uh, try to minimize the number of calls to the real backend systems and also improve the latency vector so that is how it works uh, there are other capabilities as well in AWS API gateway uh, for example throttling so what is a throttle uh, parameter it always restrict the number of requests based on different uh, requirements from the consumer for example it works in a steady state uh, count or a, you know concurrent uh, request count approach um, then api key so api key is more a security driven approach where you try to identify a specific consumer with, by you know assigning a specific api key so that api key plays a authentication parameter when he talks to the api endpoint within the aws api gateway so it Eventually, you know, it's one more layer of security when uh, when the consumer consumes the uh, backend uh, services. Now the users plan. So it typically comes with the two kind of users plan: is basic and premium. And based on that users plan, uh, the you can you can configure the parameters like throttling, number of requests you can handle. So those things you can control with uh, the users plan. Uh, if you want to go more deep dive into it, then uh, uh, you can always refer to different AWS links uh, and uh, you can do some hands on as well. So that's it uh, for today. Uh, thank you and have a good day.